What's up everybody? Uh, we're doing something a little different today on the channel. Uh, I found this bird feeder castle at Michael's and it was only five bucks so I figured um, I want to try to take this and turn it into something different. So we're going to take this little birdhouse and we're going to turn it into a dice tray. Now the first thing you're going to want is the birdhouse along with one of these little trays. They were about a buck. We're also going to need some of the shims and uh, a bigger piece to uh, use as a platform for the entire piece. Um, along with all these wood pieces, this is pretty much uh, all you're going to need. It was only about eight or nine bucks all together with that. And we also got some craft paint. These were about 79 cents. So we're keeping everything nice and cheap for our build today so that you know pretty much anybody can go to the store and pick up this stuff. I think altogether we stayed about under $20. So first thing is we need to figure out a way to get the top of this off because obviously you can't roll dice um, through solid wood. So we're going to have to drill a hole through that. We're going to have to find a way to pop this top off uh, so we can get inside and really start working on everything. So what I did was I took an X-Acto knife to the uh, side of it, that way I was able to pry it off. I tried some other ways like uh, using heat guns or um, acetone to dissolve the glue, but uh, in the end what worked out best for me was just taking that X-Acto knife and popping it off. Uh, I used a drill to cut some holes into the top and then sand it away. Um, but now that we've got everything in pieces, we can get going. This mouth is still too small, so let's go ahead and open that up with a Dremel bit. So now that we've got that all opened up, looking nice, nothing's going to catch our dice as it rolls past the, uh, the little bounce pad we're going to stick in there. So let's go ahead and see how that's going to work for us. So we've sanded these little bits down. They only needed a little bit of work because they were pretty much good to go right out of the bag. So we set it on in there. And it should be good to go like that. Um, the only thing we'll need to do is glue it in place with a hot glue gun, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But if you take a peek, I mean, it should be pretty obvious. You can roll it off. Uh, the issue is nothing really catches it, so it'll slide right off the table. So to prevent that, we've got one of these little dice tray boxes. They're not dice trays, but we're going to use them for that in this build. Um, as you can see, putting it up right up next to it, it's not going to work as we want to, so we're going to have to get rid of this little bar in the back. So let's go ahead and sand that off. So now that we've got this piece sanded off and ready, we just put it right up next to it. Um, and hopefully if we've got everything looking right, it should just catch the dice. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is make sure everything is good to go. So we've got that piece all set up and ready. Um, our little dice tray is pretty much good to go, so we're just going to stick it up there. we got to find a way to connect them together. But as you can see, we've pretty much done all the prep work we need to at this stage. And we're going to find a way to get another shim into the top of this. Because I don't really like the dice gaining all that speed and you know beating itself up. So we're going to cut this one. There we go. Look at that nice cut. Um, and we're going to take that piece that we chopped off of it. And we're just going to go ahead and put it inside, make sure that it's the right size, make sure it's not too small or too large. Um, and this one's just basically going to take the speed down from it rolling directly from the top to the bottom baffle so that we can slow down the speed of our dice. It won't damage our little castle, it won't damage our dice, and everything will be nice and pretty. The only problem is it doesn't stick in there by itself. So let's go ahead and fix that. So here we go. We've got the... Uh little piece in place. Uh, use some hot glue in there so it's going to keep everything nice and sturdy. The best part of hot glue is that it creates a really strong bond and it's going to hold everything in place nice and strong. Uh, it'll stand up to the uh, dice being thrown on it, um, but you know usually you, you place dice lightly but this will have a little bit extra strength. Uh, we've also gone ahead and glued our base to the, uh, the dice tray box. We've got our little bounce pad in there glued in as well so it's not going to wiggle around um, and the whole thing's nice and sturdy from the hot glue. So as you can see once we put the top of the castle down there hopefully it's not going to be rolling quite as fast at us and it'll make everything last a little bit longer.
the next thing we're gonna want to do is paint so I actually picked up dark gray the base coat that I actually ended up using was deep gray because it was the darkest of all the colors that I had picked out um, you want to start off with a nice dark base that way every color you add on top is just gonna lighten it up and give it a little bit better so let's go to the, the paint and bada bing bada boom here we are so as you can see it's nice and dark um, a little boring I would say just by itself you don't want to leave it this way it's just sort of a so-so job so let's go ahead and uh, pick some of our other colors so here we have a deep gray um, that's the base coat that I ended up using for that uh, the other ones we got are a dark gray but like I said I didn't end up using the dark gray just because it was a little too similar in tone but this dark top I'm definitely going to use and this light gray will really accent some of the bricks better. Um, the reason you want to do this is it's going to give you a nice interesting look once you finish everything up. Um, and that'll go a long ways and I, I honestly like the look better because I mean if you like solid you can go ahead and leave it solid. It will be your tray at the end of everything. There's one extra little bit I wanted to add to this little spot in here. I went ahead and got a Mediterranean blue. And we're just gonna paint the inside of that to make it look like it's a moat. So here we are. Uh, like I said, the little different color splashes on it, painting different bricks, different colors here and there, uh, really does go a long way. And in the end, it's gonna finish. The, the finished product is gonna look a lot better than it will if you just leave it one solid color. So here we'll go ahead and do a little glamour shot of all the different textures and tiles and stuff like that so it really makes it look more like it's made of stone rather than it's made of wood so let's go do some glamour shots so at this stage it's pretty much done uh, the only thing you gotta do after this is uh, make sure you glue the top to the bottom piece and once it's um, you know nice and sturdy and it's it's the way you want it because in the end it's your dice tray so your dice tower so uh, make sure you're happy with it so I just went and I glued the top to the bottom and then I put some extra around the base of it just to make sure it was nice and strong so let's get a good look at our finished product Thank you guys once again for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and we'll see you guys next time.